Who's your commander? Good luck. Equip. Move to combat. Resolves. Right. Now, before you attack Does me. anyone have an answer? Well played. Good game. Hello, I'm Jumbo Commander, and today I have a crazy thought experiment. What is the cheapest that I can build a commander deck? And I'm not talking about something you throw together with draft chaff. I'm talking about a real commander deck that can perform at most tables. And so I'd like to present to you a Rurik Thar the Unbowed commander deck for under $15. The first thing I want to talk about is Rurik Thar himself. Rurik Thar the Unbound is four red green for a legendary ogre warrior. He's a 6-6 with vigilance and reach, and he attacks each turn if able, and whenever a player casts a non-creature spell, Rurik Thar deals six damage to that player. Rurik Thar has just been reprinted and is coming in at a whopping 13 cents, which makes him perfect for this deck tech. So let's break down this Rurik Thar deck. And the first thing, the biggest constraint that we have is the budget, trying to get this thing as cheap as possible. Now I know that all these prices are accurate at the time of recording because I bought all these cards. I put this deck together to see how it would run compared to normally powered commander decks. Now these are accurate prices, but one thing you have to keep in mind is that it's going to be very difficult to spend $15 and buy this entire deck because you can't just get companies to ship you 10 cent cards. If you ask for a Rurkthar from a card store online, they might be selling it for 13 cents, but they won't ship it to you because it's just not worth the stamp. So you have to kind of bundle your cards together into larger groups. Maybe if you're already buying some cards for another commander deck, you can find a way to slip in these Rurkthar cards. But if you buy all of these cards together from one store, you're probably not gonna get the cheapest price possible, but it certainly is gonna be way more convenient. $15 is really the cheapest possible price for this, and hopefully you can get it in real life for maybe under $20. So right now I'm going to talk about three different categories of deck, which are the deck basics, the damage, and creature answers. I'm going to try to move pretty quickly, but this might be a longer deck tech because I've honestly covered every single non-land card in this deck, because honestly it matters what 10 cent or 5 cent card I put in. If I list 20 cheap cards and don't give you the entire list and the entire explanation, then you might not know how to complete your deck or what cards to take in or take out. So let's get started on deck basics. The basics of any deck construction is basically mana ramp and card draw. And we're going to need some mana ramp because Rurkthar is 6 CMC and you need to get them out over and over again. And so by far, by more than double, the most expensive card in this entire deck is Soul Ring. Soul Ring coming in at $2.48 honestly isn't even needed. I could cut Soul Ring from this deck and be fine, but I felt like it's such a powerful card that you can play in Commander, we might as well include it. So I've trimmed the budget to be able to fit in a Soul Ring, even though it's so expensive compared to everything else. Next up, we have some Creature Ramp with Arbor Elf, Elvish Mystic, and Llanowar Elves coming in at 10 cents, 7 cents, and 11 cents. But these are boring pieces of Mana Ramp. Let's talk about much more exciting Mana Ramp with Zerta Druid, Rada, Care to Keld, and Orcish Lumberjack coming in at 7 cents, 22 cents, and 9 cents. These cards are so much better. I think Zerta Druid is very, very good for what it is. Whenever you tap Zerta Druid, it deals one damage to each opponent. If you just tap your Mana Elf a couple times, three or four times, you've dealt so much damage and this deck is all about incidental damage. You want to be able to pin down your opponents under Rurkthar so they have a hard time casting non-creature spells. They feel like they don't want to take that 6 damage. And little bits of damage like Zerta Druid do a great job of that. Rada Air to Keld is fantastic because it's just another mana dork, but if you attack in, you can ramp even more, and this deck is creature focused. You do want to do some attacking. And then Orcish Lumberjack is super cheap, allowing you to ramp very heavily into those big creatures that you want to get out early. Mina and Den lets you get those very critical land drops that you need, and coming in at only 25 cents, it's really valuable. And don't overlook the ability to give a creature a trample, because Rurkthar does not have that. And we're going to be doing a lot of big creature attacking. 
Getting more lands on the battlefield is great, so Wood Elves coming in at 16 cents will ramp us. Blighted Woodland will also ramp us, and I didn't find a good spot for Moss Warp Bridge, so it's going to go right here. Next up, we have two cycling cards. Shafet Monitor lets you cycle it for four and then put a basic land or desert card onto the battlefield. We do have a few deserts in this deck, so that's some added utility. I know that four mana for a piece of mana ramp and a card draw is a little bit underwhelming. We're used to better than that, but honestly, this is great because it's not a spell. So it won't hit, be hit by Rukthar, it stays on theme, it's also a big ass creature if we need it. Kroos and Tusker fulfills a similar role. Cycling for three mana, I think this is the better of the two cards. This also was recently reprinted, dropping its price down tremendously. But think of this almost as a divination that could be a gigantic boar beast. You get to draw a card and search out a land. It's like you drew two for three, that's totally great. Next up, we have our second most expensive card in this deck. This deck is filled with creatures. We want to ramp like crazy, so Zendikar Resurgent just makes sense. We need lots of mana, we need card draw, and this is a card that we're going to need to get. It's 91 cents, which is a huge portion of the budget, but I think it's worth it. Also in this category comes Drum Hunter, its mana ramp and its card draw together. So you see now we've kind of transitioned into card draw after we've covered about a dozen different pieces of mana ramp. Card draw is going to be really important because we're going to have our board wiped, we're going to have our creatures removed, and so we need to find ways to get back in the game. Zendikar Resurgent and Drum Hunter will be just fine, but I really like Entourage of Trust. At just 5 cents, this card is great because it's a 5 mana 4-4 four four that draws you a card. It's great, and it actually lets you block an additional creature, letting you maintain the Monarch. And Entourage of Trust is really great. I think adding the Monarch to this deck is really great because Rurik Thar it has Vigilance, and so you're going to be attacking into people, but he's going to be back to block. You're just going to gum up the board with so many creatures. It's going to be really hard for your opponents to take back the Monarch from you, and you're just going to keep drawing cards. Another favorite of mine has been Sin Prodder. Sin Prodder is super cheap, coming in at 13 cents. It's menacing, giving you the ability to get damage through, which we're always going to care about. But most importantly, this is going to let you play a mini game. You flip the card, and obviously if it's a land, it gets binned. But if it's any creature, you kind of have to ask the table, well, which one wants to take the damage? And that's what we want. We want to spread damage around so Rurikthar's non-creature damage blast matters. So people are going to be less likely to take the damage from Sin Prodder. This is also great because you have to attack with Rurikthar every turn. And so if people are taking the damage from your Sin Prodder, it's real easy to just swing in at them too, giving you a definitive enemy. I really like Sin Prodder and I think you should try it in more decks, especially budget decks. I think it's better than a lot of people think. Next we have some more card draw, everyone was talking about Vizier of the Menagerie, but Garrick's Horde is only 10 cents. This 7 mana 7-7 seven, seven tramples and lets you play creature cards from the top of your library. Soul of the Harvest will reward you from casting creature spells, and guess what, you have a lot of creature spells in this deck. And Genesis Hydra, only 18 cents, lets you put a huge Hydra into play and go deep searching for that special creature that you need. I've already mentioned Drum Hunter, but also Abzan Beastmaster and Garrick's Pack Leader will all draw us cards depending upon how big a creature we have on the board. Now one reason why I'm a little bit hesitant about these types of card draw is that you already have to have a board presence then to draw more cards. I think that they're going to be worthwhile inclusions, but I would rather have more reliable card draw. You notice how a lot of this card draw isn't as reliable. You're like, oh, well, for Zendikar Resurgent, I need to play creatures. Entourage of Tress, I need to hold on to the Monarch. Sin Prodder, I need to have an opponent give me my cards. All of these things are really a lot of hoops to jump through. And that's why these cards are so cheap, because it is not reliable card draw. We do not have Lifecrafter's Bestiary in this deck, it's just too expensive. But that is reliable card draw, you're in control of that card draw. Sylvan Library, you're in control of that card draw. All of these, you feel kinda passive when it comes to the card draw, which 
can make you feel a little bit anxious, but one thing that can make you feel good is how many instances of card draw we have in here. So far, I've mentioned 10 different sources of card draw, and there's even more. Going on to Shamanic Revelation, this is a spell, but I think that the card draw and the life you gain is going to offset the damage that you might do to yourself through your own Rook Thar. Shamanic Revelation could draw you a ton of cards. Again, it's narrow, you need to have creatures on the battlefield, but if there's one thing that this deck does is flood the board with creatures. Next we have a little bit of a tutor package. Now you might think a tutor package on a budget can't work, but we have that. Moonvuli Beast Tracker coming in at just four cents. Man, this is going to search up important cards. Just remember these abilities like Hexproof, Reach, Death Touch, and you're going to see these come up over and over again, and you're going to remember, oh, I can tutor this up. For example, we can tutor up Garrick's Horde already, and tons of other cards. Brutalizer Exarch lets you get any creature and put it on top of your library or answer something of your opponents. Fierce Empath lets you get your big things. And also, this is another recent reprint, so the price of 17 cents has been brought down a lot. Den Protector is only a quarter, and I think that it's definitely worth it in this deck to be able to recycle some of your old cards. Finally, we have a Slam Dunk Inclusion. It goes wide. It ramps us. It tutors up our finisher. From Beyond is just an all-star, and 20 cents is well worth the price of this card that will win you a game. How do we win this game? Through creature damage. We have to embrace a lot of different sources of damage, and Rook Thar is one of the best. Being able to throw around 6 damage here and 6 damage there is really great, and we should not, not underestimate just the attacks that this creature gets in. And so we want to make sure that we tax our opponents over and over again so they feel the pressure of their low life total. Zozu the Punisher just punishes your opponents with little pings of damage with every land they play. Charging Cinderhorn is awesome because it'll charge around and do tons of damage. Same thing with Crimson Honor Guard, punishing your opponents for not having a commander. These cards are really great. Also notice the Trample on Crimson Honor Guard, very nice. And these cards are so cheap too. 24 cents for Zozo the Punisher with that recent reprint. Charging Cinderhorn is 18 cents. Crimson Honor Guard is 14 cents. And this is just going to spread tons of damage around on the table so that you can get in with big creatures. And the big creatures that I want to get in with, well, most importantly, are your big creatures. Molten Primordial can end a game, and it's only 28 cents. Zealous Conscripts can steal any permanent. So just because we don't have any Planeswalkers in this deck because they're too expensive, doesn't mean we can't steal yours and use it for our own good. With all these attacks, we might want some combat tricks. I think some of the best come in the form of creatures. Wrecking Ogre, blood rushing someone, giving it plus three, plus three, and double strike is huge. Rubble Hulk, also giving attacking creature plus X plus X, where X is the number of lands you control, is crazy, just over the top amounts of damage. And at 12 cents and 8 cents, these are very cheap combat tricks that can be creatures themselves. Sorok the Hunt Caller is a pretty intimidating 5-4 for 4, 4 mana, but if you have Formidable, you're gonna have Formidable in this deck. You can keep giving creatures haste every turn. Play another creature, give it haste. Play another creature, give it haste. It's really great. And Bloodsworn Steward, even though it's a little bit more narrow because it only gives your commander haste, it also makes Rook Thar an 8-8. Eight, eight. <laughs> That's so awesome. It's now like an 8-8 eight, eight with haste. And by the way, this is still a 4-mana four 4-4 four, four flyer. That's still a really great creature. A lot of these creatures that are supposedly like supplementing our attacks, like Surak is a 5-4 for four, 4. This Bloodsworn Steward, which you're playing, I guess, to sort of ramp up your commander, is still a 4-mana four 4-4 four, four flyer with upside. So these cards on their own are just great. Next, we have a little bit more pump action, along with some chaos. Warmonger Hellkite, Crown of Doom, Ronus's Monument. Warmonger Hellkite is great. Again, we have a 6-mana 5-5 five, five flyer that has pump. That's a good card in its own right, but it also has this added benefit of all creatures attack each combat if able. 
your commander is already doing this, so it's not a huge downside for you, but your opponents are going to be caught in between a rock and a hard place because they're going to have to attack, and odds are they're not going to attack you. I mean, they're just going to start spreading damage around. And look at this activated ability. Attacking creatures get plus one, plus one until end of turn. You don't even have to activate that on your turn. Let's say that you force your opponent to attack and they attack your other opponent all out. You can spend some red mana into this and suddenly pump their team up, turning your opponents against each other. And that's another reason why I love Crown of Doom. Crown of Doom is great because you play it for three and then you give it to someone else for two mana. And once you give it away to someone else, it can never come back to you. And then it becomes this crazy curse that people sink mana into and pass it back and forth. Because Crown of Doom says whenever a creature attacks you or a planeswalker you control, it gets plus two plus zero until end of turn. You can never get this horrible cursed crown of doom back to your side of the battlefield again so it just keeps going back and forth incentivizing attacks between your enemies and again lowering the life total of the table and you're you're happy with that you really want to lower everyone's life total and also in this artifact section ronus's monument three mana lets you ramp out your green spells a little bit faster but more importantly it turns the mana dorks that you can play into pump spells later on in the game Trample is going to be really important too, so this is just a great monument. I do want to point out Crown of Doom and Ronus's monument are artifacts, and that's going to come up a little bit later. This deck is very artifact and enchantment light, and I think that that's actually an advantage that we have built in. But let's go on to a little bit more. I mentioned Ronus's monument has Trample, and Trample is going to be really important because you have big creatures. So Archetype of Aggression and Kenra Charioteer can give your whole team Trample. And Skarg, the Rage Pits, can be an activated land that gives target creature plus one, plus one, and Trample until end of turn. I think Trample is going to be really important, especially because your commander doesn't have Trample and you have to swing with it. So I think giving it Trample is going to go a long way. So Trample is one way of getting through damage, but also you can just falter your whole opponent's board. Seismic Elemental comes down and it's almost like a spell. Creatures without flying can't block this turn. By the way, coming in at one cent, I didn't even know you could get a card for one cent. Seismic Elemental purchased it purchased it for one cent. And Rogue's Passage lets you get that damage through as well. I can foresee you just playing one of these cards and the game just ending right there. But I got a few other win conditions. Decimator of Provinces. This is another kind of expensive card coming in at 39 cents. Is a cool overrun pig. I love it. And Overwhelming Stampede is just another powerful effect. I also want to mention that From Beyond fetches up your Decimator of Provinces. So not only does it let you go wide with more of these Eldrazi Scions, but then you sack it, you get your Decimator of Provinces, you play it, and then you win the game. But you can't always win through combat, and that's why I've included cards like Warstorm Surge. 42 cents, but it's worth it. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, it deals damage equal to its power to target creature or player. Man, you just keep casting creatures, which is what you love to do, and you keep just destroying your opponents. And Stalking Vengeance does something similar, but it's when the creature dies. So you can just swing in over and over again, and as your creatures die, they just keep doing more damage on their way out. And then finally, I have another spell that's becoming one of my favorites. I love playing this in every single deck, and that's Treacherous Terrain. Six red-green for a sorcery that has basic land cycling. So if you need to, you can just chuck this for two mana and get the land drop you need. But if you don't need a land drop, Treacherous Terrain deals damage to each opponent equal to the number of lands that player controls. In Commander, this is regularly like 10, 12, 15, it deals so much damage and it does it to each opponent. That is so just backbreaking. And so when you have spells that are this impactful, I just have to include them in this deck, especially because this spell is eight cents. Now that's been a lot of the more aggressive creatures. Let's talk about creatures that we can use to control the board. Another slightly pricey include and another artifact is Steel Hellkite. 
Six mana for a flying 5-5, five, five, great. Pumpable, great. But most importantly, you can pay X mana into it and destroy each non-land permanent with convert a mana cost X. Uh, enemy token armies? Easily destroyed by a Steel Hellkite. Problematic enchantments, artifacts? You just keep destroying it with Steel Hellkite. But actually, one thing is that green is really good at dealing with artifacts. We're going to get there because we're in the controlling strategy now. What we really need to get rid of actually is creatures. And so Steel Hellkite can get rid of these utility creatures that we might have a hard time dealing with. Another card that can deal with these smaller creatures is Uvenvald Tracker. Just one mana for a green 1-1, one, one, but it makes your creatures fight each other. So your Steel Hellkite can fight their Mother of Runes that's been blanking a bunch of your attacks. We actually have the tools to deal with flyers really well. Arbor Colossus and Silk Lash Spider. Arbor Colossus is a pretty good rate. 5 mana for a 6-6. Six, six. It has reach, which means you can deal with flyers that way. But also when you monstrous it and it becomes a 9-9, nine, nine, you can destroy target creature with flying and opponent controls. So hold up some mana, activate this, and boom! kill a flyer, have a huge 9-9, nine nine, and at 4 cents, sure. And Silk Lash Spider is great because it can just decimate an entire team of flyers. Next, Dual Caster Mage. It was super hyped, and then people realized it wasn't that good, and it dropped down into Oblivion, coming in at 32 cents. But this card is much better than its 32 cent price tag. Dual Caster Mage is the tool you need when you need it. If someone counters your stuff, counter them back with a dual caster mage. You're casting Treacherous Train, double it and win the game. Someone else is drawing cards, say yes please and thank you, and you draw cards too. Dual caster mage is just what you need in all of these situations. I mentioned earlier that your board is going to get wiped, and it is, and that's what you're worried about because you have so many creatures you're committing to the board. That's why a card like Caller of the Claw is so good. It lets you immediately replenish your side of the battlefield, and it lets you get in those sweet, sweet attacks really quickly. Also, a Desert uh, Shifet Monitor, the Desert Endless Sands is only 10 cents, and this can save your creatures from removal so that you can play them again. Next, we have a big mana control spell. Nine mana for this gargoyle. It's a 4-5. Nullstone gargoyle, only 24 cents, is a flyer, and when the first non-creature spell each turn is played, counter that spell. This is gonna throw a wrench in so many people's plans. By the way, Rurkthar will still deal six damage. It doesn't care if the spell resolves or not, just if it's cast. So just imagine if you have both of these friends out on the battlefield and someone's like, oh, I gotta do something. They tr <laughs> It's so great. They try to cast a spell and it deals them six damage and gets countered and then they have to do it again and then they get six more damage and they finally get to resolve something. Oh my gosh, I love it. I love it. And this card is perfect for this deck. Let's exert a little bit more control with another card that's a little bit pricey, but I think is totally worth it. Dwarven Miner. One in a red for a 1-2 Dwarf, and for 3 mana to tap, destroy target non-basic land. Oh my gosh, this is so great! Do you know how afraid people are going to be of you? You're in your $15 deck, and you're like, yeah, I'll destroy that land. Yeah, I'll destroy that land. You're going to have so much political power on the battlefield, and you're just going to keep taking out lands. And for 38 cents, this is the kind of control you can wield. And it's not just lands you can destroy. Acidic Slime gets artifacts and enchantments as well. Terastodon gets all of those things, including Planeswalkers, which is really great. And Viashino Heretic is another pricey card, 39 cents, but you can keep activating it to blow up artifacts. Uh, two mana tap it, uh, destroy your Gilded Lotus, and it deals five damage to you. It deals damage to the artifact's controller equal to its casting cost. It doesn't just blow it up. It does even more damage, and this is the incidental damage we care about. Oh, via Shino Heretic, you're worth the 39 cents to be in the stack. And so, we find another strategy. We are not running a lot of artifacts and enchantments. We're running a bunch of creatures, and so we can start hating on everyone else's non-basic lands, their expensive mana bases, their crazy artifacts. This is why we might not even need that soul ring. 
How about Wave of the Troll? Coming in at 20 cents, this seven mana sorcery says each player sacrifices all artifacts, enchantments, and non-basic lands. Now you get to go get basics to replace all of those non-basic lands, but by the way, you have tons of basics. Do they have tons of basics? You don't even know. But so far, you've wiped away all of the artifacts and enchantments. And yeah, you have a handful of these. It's, this is a little bit of a non-bow sometimes, but this is nothing compared to the artifact mana that many other decks run. This is nothing compared to the over-the-top enchantments your opponents are playing. So Wave of Vitriol is a blowout for them and a minor inconvenience for you. Molder Slug is another super powerful card that I bet you've never seen before. Molder Slug is only five mana, and it's a creature, it's a four six, that's fine. But it says at the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player sacrifices an artifact. Every single upkeep. It starts going around and everyone sacrifices their soul ring. Everyone sacrifices an artifact every single turn, that includes you. So I mentioned the downside of having some of these artifacts, and so you might trim down your artifact count a little bit. Maybe you don't need that soul ring or that Nullstone Gargoyle because it's 24 cents. But Molder Slug, I'm telling you, this is going to take out a bunch of decks. Let's keep going, let's keep going. How about Hammer Mage? Another find for this deck. And this one, 10 cents. One in a red for a 1-1. One, one. X, red, tap, discard a card from your hand, destroy all artifacts with converted mana cost X or less. D imagine what this does. You just pay three mana, tap this, throw away some extra land you have, and suddenly you're destroying every signet on the battlefield and every soul ring, every mana vault, every... Oh my gosh. This is insane. Why is this not on so many commander tables? I know, because everyone likes to play with their own artifacts. Well, you don't have to play with artifacts. You can just destroy them all. Think of that, how about Shatterstorm? Shatterstorm is only five cents, by the way, not for this art. It's for the really ugly art, but that's okay. Because Shatterstorm reads destroy all artifacts. They can't be regenerated. You just have all of the artifact hate in there. Now, I think what a card that I would prefer more than Shatterstorm is Bane of Progress, because it's a creature and it hits enchantments too and it gets huge. But Bane of Progress is $1.63. Maybe if we cut that soul ring we can find room for bane of progress huh to be a creature it's so thematic oh my gosh but there's one more card i want to mention it's also quite expensive at 48 cents i love that's my budget I'm like oh my gosh we're nearing 50 cents way high on the budget but this is worth it three in a red from the ashes destroy all non-basic lands and for each land you destroy this way you can search up a basic this is gonna decimate decks it's like a cheaper wave of vitriol oh my gosh guys this is a deck that can shut people out. And they just think like, oh, you're playing a sub $15 deck that's so cute. And then you start playing these threats, you start ramping things out, and you start choking them of their artifacts, of their enchantments. They try to take you out and suddenly you're just dealing damage here and there and here and there. And Rorkthar is always coming out on the battlefield, always threatening to do that six damage, always attacking. And that's what you're going to do. You're going to keep attacking over and over again. And they're going to realize that you have a surprising amount of control in this deck. And you have a surprising amount of reach because you have chaos on your side as you're stealing creatures, as you're pumping them. You have haste, you have flying, you have tutors, you have card draw, and you have momentum as you keep swinging in with these awesome creatures. Rorkthar has been a challenge for me to build under $15, but I've played this deck and it is fun. And so I urge you all to take some inspiration from this. Heck, cobble together your own gathering of cards and make something cheap and awesome and fun to play with. I want to thank my patrons because they're here to support me, and I want to thank you for supporting me right now because you've watched this video all the way to the end, and it's a longer video than usual. Thank you so much for sticking with me. My name is Jumbo Commander. I'm found all over the internet. Check me out in all the normal places, and I'll see you soon for a completely different type of deck tech. I'm gonna try and make the most ridiculously stupid expensive deck next. 
yeah, these are fun thought experiments. Hopefully you'll join me for that one too. I'll see y'all real soon.